Hey y'all, I am back and I have more creepy stories. People were asked to share the scariest thing that's ever happened to them and this is what they had to say. I read the first one and I just, I can't even imagine what else is in here. Number one says room four. Fresh out of nursing school, I got my first real job at a fairly large hospital in a department that I honestly never thought I would ever work in. It was a six bed cardiac ICU with rooms that overlooked the city capitol building. It was a very nice unit and I started out working 12 hour night shifts. The hospital I worked at had four other ICUs that were always full, so my unit always ended up being code bed. Meaning if someone was arrested or went downhill fast somewhere around the hospital, they came to us. I'd been working there for a year and I was no stranger to death. Each patient of mine who had died on my shift was usually already on their way out. The families were by their side, the DNR order was signed, the funeral home was already picked out. It was rarely ever a surprise. In fact, the only time I was ever needed to do CPR on my shift, it wasn't even in my department. So I went on a nice long two week vacation, got engaged and had a beautiful tan. On my first night back, I received a report from the day charge nurse. She said she was off for a few days and suggested to remind the next day charge nurse that the priest was coming in the morning to bless room four. I thought she was kidding at first, but she was serious. Apparently, while I was on vacation, every patient who was admitted to that room had died. This came to no shock to me. People died often in our department, and it being a very religious institution, having a chaplain for almost every department, I just shook it off. Then, she said that room 4 was empty and that it would serve as code bed for the night. Around 2 a.m., I got a call saying they have someone to fill our open bed. The ICU downstairs was now going to be code bed, so we were getting your run-of-the-mill chest pain. Take a look at in the morning kind of patient and nothing to get excited about. We get the patient admitted and all settled in room four. He was a gentleman about 50 or so years old, very pleasant. His wife was with him and she looked dead on her feet. I got her some warm blankets and took her to our waiting room that had caught so she could get some rest. Around 3.30, I was watching monitors and the cameras in each room. All the patients were fast asleep. The cameras all cycled through about three seconds each on one small TV we had on the desk. Room one was fine, room two was fine, room three was fine. Room four, there was someone in there. It cycled too quickly for me to get a good look and the doors to the unit were locked. Maybe the other nurse let his wife back in. I walked down the hall and glanced inside. There was nobody. I shrugged it off. It was late, I was tired, I was probably just seeing things. I went back to the desk and continued watching the screen. Room one, room two, room three, room four. I was not imagining anything. There was someone in room four and the person was standing in the corner by the window, their figure completely draped in shadow. I couldn't move my body. It cycled through again. This time it was closer to the patient's bed by maybe two or three feet. The hair stood straight up on my neck. Nar, I'm busy, nar go. The next time it cycled through, it was even closer. It stood in the light coming from the hallway, but despite the light, it was still shrouded in darkness cycled through again, and it was right next to the bed. My heart started pounding, and I could barely squeak to the nurse on the other end of the desk. As soon as my words formed and I was able to make some kind of noise to get her attention, the alarm on the monitor went off, signaling the patient had cardiac arrested. The overhead system came on. A cart is needed in CCU room four. People poured into the department, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, respiratory therapists, they all rushed into the room, but I couldn't move. Cycle through the rooms again, room four came up, and this time the lights were on and there were 10 to 15 people surrounding the bed doing CPR and slamming meds into his IV. Someone went to get his wife from the waiting room, but there it was, in the opposite corner again, a dark figure watching this scene play out just standing there. The man died of a heart attack. Room four was blessed that morning, right on schedule, and I put in my two weeks notice. I skimmed through that story. Oh my god, it's so much worse when you read the entire thing. Nar's moving my tripod. He's like all over me right now. I don't know why. I would not have even put in my two weeks notice. I would have just quit. I would have never showed up ever again. And if anyone ever questioned why, I would tell them that story. And they would get it. This next story says Slender Man. And I'm scared. I hate him. It was near the end of high school, 2006-ish. Fall in northern Wisconsin. Perfect stomping round town weather. One Friday after school, I was over at my on and off high school boyfriend Jay's house playing video games or whatever. Around 7 p.m. we typically would meet up with our whole crew at a local restaurant, but we still had several hours to kill. We were getting bored, missed those days, and it was so lovely out, so Jay suggested we go for a walk down the train tracks on the west side of town. The town has been built up so much since then, but at the time, there was only a fleet farm and a small burger joint near the tracks, and that was about it. Miles of woods on either side surrounded the tracks. 
as it was perfect weather and that doesn't last long in Wisconsin, I agreed, and we jumped in his car and drove across town. We parked his little car to the side of the burger joint. At this point, it's late afternoon, about dusk, sun about to set. We hop out of the car and walk about a block where the train tracks cross the street, hook a right down the tracks through the woods. That area didn't get as many trains going through as a different set of tracks in town, and there was also plenty of space to the left and right of the tracks slash into the woods, so if a train did approach, it seemed safe. You could see maybe a mile in each direction if a train was coming, and to either side, just tall pines. We're walking down, balancing on the tracks, talking shit, jumping over stuff, whatever, for maybe five to ten minutes. Up ahead of us, we could see a few boxcars off to the side of the tracks. Feels creepy, but it was normal. As we approached them, we could see there were two boxcars attached to each other, maybe another 10 to 20 feet, and then a single boxcar behind them. I got the heebie-jeebies as we approached the boxcars, but they were both shut. So as we peeked around on them, climbed up, etc., they were less menacing. Cool. Kept walking, sun is now down, and it's twilight. Quiet. We're both looking down as we walk past the boxcars, balancing and such. We get past them maybe another length of a boxcar when I just have the sense to look up. That's when I see it. I stopped short. I swear the hair on my arms stood up and suddenly I felt like a prey animal that had been spotted. Jay, what's that up there? There's someone on the tracks. He stopped and looked up. But looked like maybe half a mile to a mile down the tracks, standing directly in the middle of them, was the shape of a person, or what I thought was. But for how far away it is, the figure was unnaturally tall, standing stiff and still, arms at sides, with what looked like the shape of a bowler hat or something. I can still picture it. Now, Jay doesn't fuck around with ghost stories and alien tales, he's a non-believer, but he saw it too. Uh, we need to go, he said. Grab my hand and spin me back the direction we came from. We were walking very briskly, but if you've ever been on train tracks, you know it's all small rocks and pebbles, so it's a little rough. About a minute passed, my heart was pounding, and I looked back over my shoulder. This person, who was originally about a mile away, was so much closer. It's like he suddenly jumped half the distance between where he originally was to where we were. But still, the same sickeningly tall, featureless shadow with a hat, standing still, arms to sides, stood in the middle of the tracks. Jay, I actually screamed, making him whip his head around. I've never seen this guy scared. He grabbed my hand tighter and broke off into a sprint. Jay's about six foot and I'm five four, so his stride is a bit longer than mine. A couple years prior, I recovered from a fractured knee and femur, and it's common knowledge I cannot run. If you've ever seen the cartoons with someone running and the other person is kind of flapping behind the runner, held by the hand, that's what I felt like. He took off. My legs moved, but my toes barely skimmed the tracks. We ran past the boxcars off to the side, and as we're about to get past the two that are hooked together, I stole one more frantic look over my shoulder. There he was, one boxcar away, same weird proportions, like a dark opaque shadow. I swear my eyes bugged out of my head and my body and adrenaline said, get the fuck out. I forced my legs down and pushed my own damn self into a run. We plowed forward, no more glances back, hooked back into the street and frantically fumbled our way back into his car, slamming and locking the doors behind us. I remember both of us sitting there panting, staring forward for a good minute or two until snapping back to it with the what the fuck. We went to our hangout with the crew at seven, chomping at the bit to tell everyone what happened. No one believed us or cared really. I told my dad later on and he says so many people died building that railroad, it was probably a ghost. Thanks dad. Fast forward to maybe 2011, I'm in college, Jay and I break up and don't keep in touch. I get a text from him out of the blue, a link to the Slenderman game. I remember sitting in my dorm with a chill as I watched the preview and felt sick to my stomach, how he only moved towards you when you're not looking and is frozen staring at you when you look back. I read the Wikipedia page and creepypasta and all that shit. I know all that stuff is made up, but the similarities to what we experienced freaks me out. Present day, I looked up the chunk of railroad where it went down in my hometown on Google Maps. It's much more developed with shopping and housing around, but there's still a little stretch surrounded by trees, which is the one we walked down. I'm going back for Thanksgiving and was thinking about taking a jaunt to the tracks, but reading all these spooky stories made me change my mind. Just in case it is some entity, I don't want to take it back with me. No, you, I, no, you're brave for even thinking of returning. I would never be able to do that. Oh my God, I would never be able to go back to that, ever. Okay, and I think I'm gonna read one more story from this. There's actually a lot in here, they're just longer. So if you guys want more of these, I can totally read more. But this last one says, late night laughter. Just over 10 years ago, I was fresh out of college and had moved back to my parents' house for the free rent food for nine months before I was leaving the state for graduate school. To earn some scratch, I took a part-time gig doing some light bookkeeping for a small business owner guy that my dad knew. 
They had a business where you could rent low-level farm equipment, a small mom-and-pop type thing, and the sticks. Since they knew my family, they trusted me to go in there for about 15 to 20 hours a week and check and file the rental forms, make sure nobody missed a payment date, answer an email or two discussing prices, availability, etc. Super easy gig. The old building where I worked was about 90 years old and at the top of a little hill. The downstairs used to be an old country bar until the 1970s. I could work any hours I wanted to as long as the work got done, so I'd usually go in after 7pm and stay until around midnight or 1am, since I knew I'd be alone and could listen to music loud and take my time. The office was on the second floor of the building and looked out onto the long driveway. One night during winter it had snowed a few inches, but I was desperate to get out of the house, so I went into work at about 8pm. I always left the gate open at the bottom of the hill since, believe me when I say that, nobody ever showed up at night. We were literally in the middle of nowhere. To even turn onto our short road, you had to be coming to our specific building and know where it was beforehand. So I was jamming away to some fallout boy, everyone makes mistakes when they're young, and having some coffee, and I keep glancing at the snow outside as I worked. Since our one orange street light reflected onto the ground at the gate and it was causing the light to shine off the snow in a really cool, dare I say, beautiful way. Around midnight, I went downstairs to do my bathroom business, then came back upstairs and got settled back into my work. Probably did about five minutes of work when I glanced outside and saw a huge imprint of something in the fresh snow just below the orange light. It seemed like a huge dog or a substantial animal had just rolled around on the ground on its back or something. Since I didn't notice it just 15 minutes before, it had to have just happened while I was in the bathroom. I shook it off and assumed an animal was attracted to the light or something. Around 2 a.m. I was leaving and got out of my car to lock the gate, and to be honest, I had pretty much forgotten about the imprint in the snow. But when I looked down, I was shocked to see that it wasn't just some disturbed snow, but it was undeniably the imprint of a human-made snow angel. I used to make snow angels when I was a kid, and they're very recognizable, so I 100% knew for sure that's what this was. And it was deliberately made underneath the light post, but it wasn't from a kid. It was from a very large person, and I already knew. Whoever had made this snow angel could easily have looked up and seen me through the window, so they must have waited for me to head downstairs to the bathroom to make this angel. No cars had pulled up to our building. I would have seen or heard them, even from the bathroom. So I glanced around for footprints in the snow and saw there was one set that led to the nearby woods to the right of the building. It was clear the person didn't use the road, but instead came from the opposite side, which instantly made me uneasy since that side was just trees in darkness for miles and miles. By now, I was freaking out and trying to get back in my SUV. That's when I heard it. Before I could get inside, I heard loud, high-pitched laughing coming from the woods. It almost sounded like a fake laugh, like the Witch of the Wizard of Oz, like somebody was doing it fake on purpose. It was close enough that I knew they could see me, but I couldn't see them at all, since other than the streetlight I was under, there was no illumination. After a few seconds of laughing, they stopped, and then it was just silence everywhere except for my heart beating through my ears. Then the laughing started again, though louder this time, more like screaming and laughing combined. I sort of froze for like five seconds, listening in panic. Now, I spent a lot of time in that area, and I know what coyotes and foxes sound like at night with their high-pitched screeches during mating season, but this was very human. It felt like it was an adult man trying to emulate a woman laughing, like someone deliberately trying to make a fake scary shriek laugh in order to scare someone. Well, it fucking worked. After five seconds, I immediately filled up with adrenaline, got in my car, and drove the hell away from there as fast as I could without sliding off the road. I worked there another six weeks or so and never had a single issue, though I knew where my boss kept his gun and I always made sure it was there when I started my shift, and I certainly always locked the gate from now on. I need to know who it was, why they were doing it, like, wh and why didn't they come back and do anything else? What was the point? I just don't get why they did that. If they weren't going to do anything or come back or do it again, like, I just, I don't know why you did it in the first place. Why? Why? I want to read more of these so bad. So I'm going to. I don't care if you even want it or not, I'm going to read more of them. Probably next week. But that is all I have for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to share the scariest thing that has ever happened to you, I will have my subreddit linked down below. It could be like paranormal, it could be a stalker story, it could literally be anything. I just want to know what happened to you. But I'm gonna go. I love you guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye! Have I told you guys what I'm gonna be for Halloween? I don't think I have. I have two costumes. One for Friday, one for Saturday. I don't know which one I'm gonna do for what night, but my 
My lamer costume is just Tinkerbell. Me and my friend were supposed to match, but I'm pretty sure, like not like two Tinkerbells, but like the two fairies. But I, I don't think she's even doing that anymore. So now I'm just like stuck. Hey, Nar. Now I'm just stuck being Tinkerbell. And I don't, I don't want to be Tinkerbell by myself. So I'm being Tinkerbell. I already have the costume. So I'm like, it's like a week before Halloween. So I'm like, I'm just going to stick with it. It's fine. It's like, I, I don't care for it, but it's whatever. My other costume is Tina from Bob's Burgers. And I'm so excited for that one. I actually got like the cutest skirt off Amazon to wear with it. And it's like a mini skirt because I was trying to figure out Tina's proportions, but also I'm not gonna wear a long skirt. Like let's be so fucking for real right now. But it made sense that the skirt was short with the sock to like skirt ratio that she has. So I have like long socks, but then like a mini skirt, but it's the cutest skirt I've ever seen. It's literally from Amazon. It's like 30 bucks. It's, like I'm gonna wear that again. I love costumes where I will actually wear this stuff again. Because Tinkerbell, what the fuck am I gonna wear wings for? But yeah, I'm really excited for Halloween. You guys know it's my favorite holiday. Actually, honestly, Christmas might be my favorite, but I do really love Halloween. I love dressing up for Halloween. I think it's so fun. But that is all that I have to share. I don't really have anything else to tell you. So I'm gonna go. I love you. I don't know what that was. Sorry. All right, see ya.